to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In Acts chapter 11, verse 26, the Bible says, They were called Christians first in Antioch. Today we're thinking about the question, Why am I a Christian? If you're a Christian, why are you a Christian? What motivated that and what makes you want to be a faithful Christian to the Lord each and every day? What a wonderful question and a wonderful subject for each of us to look into our lives and examine our hearts and make sure our motives are what they need to be in serving the Lord. As always, we're so glad that you joined us for our study of this wonderful subject. If you don't have your Bible out and ready, we want you to stop what you're doing and get your Bible. Go get it. Make sure you've got it out and open as we're going to look to the Word of God to answer this wonderful question today. Friend, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ, the Lord's Church in your area. These Christians would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether that be for worship on Sunday morning or Bible study on Wednesday night. You'll find people there who are kind and hospitable, who are loving, who want to know what the Bible says and will be glad in any way to help you with any religious matter. If you've got a, a Bible question, whether that be on matters of salvation, about worship, moral matters, whatever it may be, You'll find people at the Lord's Church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down, open up the Bible, and just simply see what God says on the matter. And so we want to encourage you to visit the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ, in your area. Friend, we also want to help you in your desire to know God and His will here at the Gospel of Christ. We have a great uh, tool. We have a great uh, many tools that could help you in your Bible study. We have video lessons, audio lessons, video lessons of every book in the Old and New Testament, a wide variety of topical studies, audio lessons to go along with that, written material, transcripts, study questions, just good Bible study material that's all available to you free of charge. Just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material, and that would be a very good tool to help you in your study of God's Word. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of this series of lessons or any of our lessons, just log on to our website, fill out a free media request form. We'd be glad to send that to you as a digital download, or if you need it as a DVD or CD, we can make that available to you as well. And friend, we want to encourage you to check us out on the app, in the App Store and on Facebook as well. There is an app for the Gospel of Christ available for Android and iPhones. We want to encourage you to check that out. It's a great way to keep up with what we're doing and stay tuned with our work as well in that way. Let's consider the question. Uh, a heart-pondering, a sobering question today. Why am I a Christian? Why are you a Christian? You know, as you think about this question, there are definitely some incorrect answers. Some people may have been pressured into becoming a Christian by a family member or a loved one. Jesus said, he who doesn't love father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Doing it because somebody else pressured you or wanted you to, that's not really the motive that a person needs to have. Some may become a Christian because it was the popular thing to do, because everybody was doing it and it looked popular and wanted to go along with the crowd. Again, you've got to do that for your own reasons, because you understand the need for salvation in your life and you want to make a commitment to Jesus, regardless of what anybody does or does not want to do. Some may have become a Christian because it just felt right. It was a good feeling and it just felt right and I wanted to go with that feeling. 
Well, friend, feelings aren't always a safe guide, as we see in Acts 23, verse 1. And again, we need to make sure that our motive for doing it is the right reason. Some may have become a Christian because they thought it would make them wealthy. They thought it would gain uh, clients or gain a bigger group of people that they could influence. Again, those are not good reasons why a person should become a Christian. Today, we want to offer some reasons from the Bible as to why a person, why I'm a Christian, why a person should be a Christian, if you are a Christian, reasons to stay motivated to be faithful to the Lord every day. And so, why am I a Christian? Number one, I'm a Christian because I'm convinced it's the right way. Christianity is the only way to the Father. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes to the Father except by me. Based on the evidence in God's Word, the prophecies that we find, uh, the, the scientific information found in the Bible, the, 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 the geographical information, the historical information that all lines up, the evidence that affirms the Bible is true, I'm convinced Christianity is the right way to get to the Father. In fact, I'm convinced there's no other way outside of Jesus Christ. It's exclusively the right way. Acts 4 verse 12, Jesus said, or Peter said, nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The only way a person can get to God and be saved is through Jesus Christ. In fact, did you know there are really only two ways? Matthew 7, 13, 14. There is a wide gate, and on that wide gate, there is a broad way that leads to eternal destruction. Then there's the right way. Narrow gate, restricted, difficult way that leads to eternal life, and few there are who find that. Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. And so it's the only right way to God. It's right. Christianity is right in its origin. Its origin goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. The seed of woman would crush the head of Satan. Jesus crushed Satan, his head, in the, in, when he died on the cross. And according to Romans 16, 20, Paul said, my God shall crush Satan under your feet shortly. He has the right origin in that the whole Bible, what's the message? If we could sum up the one word, what the Bible is all about, what would it be? Christ. Jesus is what the whole Bible is all about. It's right. Christianity is right in its destiny. The Christian's destiny is to live with God. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus said, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be. Also, the child of God has the destiny, one day of living with God in heaven for all eternity. But you know, Christianity also has the right purpose, a selfless purpose. The Bible teaches us that our purpose is to honor God and to live for Him. Isaiah 43, 7, God said, Everyone who's called by my name, whom I've created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I've made him. Uh, Solomon said in the long ago as he sought for meaning and purpose. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. As a Christian, it's right because I have a purpose worth living for, a selfless purpose to serve God and to help save others with the gospel. Secondly, as we think about the wonderful question, why am I a Christian? I'm a Christian not only because it's the right way, the exclusive right way. I'm a Christian because of God's amazing love for me. Friend, I will promise you, no one has ever loved you like God's loved you. When the Bible says, God is love. I don't know that we fully understand how much God loves each one of us, so much so that He gave His Son, His only begotten Son, to die on the cross for you and for me. And He says, 
cast all your cares upon Him. He cares for you. Now, friend, as you think about God's amazing love for each one of us, listen to the words of Jeremiah chapter 31. I want you to hear this beautiful statement about God's love in verse number three. The Lord has appeared of old to me, say, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. God's loved you from eternity is the idea. Now, you say, okay, that's all good and well, and I hear about it. People talk about the love of God, but how can I really know God loves me? Let me give you three evidences of that. The love of God is evidenced in the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. What do you mean, gave His only begotten Son? He Himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. While we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone might dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's not only God's love is not only evidenced by the sacrifice of Jesus, it's evidenced in the forgiveness of sin. Psalm 103, verse 10, The Lord has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. If I didn't get what I deserved for sin, what did I get? Micah 7, 18 and 19, God cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Jesus said in Matthew 26, 28, as he thought about his own blood and sacrifice, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. And when you hear Peter's words, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, can you not see the love of God evidenced in forgiveness? But then there's a third evidence of God's love, and that's evidenced in God's providential care for his children. David said in Psalm 37, verse 25, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. If we seek first God's kingdom, all these things are going to be taken care of. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. James 1, 17, My God shall supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 19. And friend, it's that love that motivates me to want to live a faithful life every day. The love of Christ compels us. What do you mean? Because we think about it, we judge thus. If one died for all, all died. And he died for all that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for him who died for them and rose again. Doesn't the love of God motivate you every day to want to be a faithful Christian? Number three, I'm a Christian because of the amazing power of Christianity. Nothing is more powerful than the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You say, power, what do you mean? Power to overcome this world. You see, the world separates us from God. James 4, verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? All that is in the world, lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, it's not of the Father, it's of the wicked one in the world, and all that's in it is one day going to pass away. 1 John 2, verse 15 through 17. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And friend, the encouragement is, we can as well. Listen to these passages. 1 John 5, verse 4. He that is in you is greater than he who is in the world. This is the victory we have. Even our faith, the world with all its problems, all its sin, its temporary nature, Christians have the power to overcome that and to live with God for all eternity. How else is Christianity powerful? It's powerful not only to overcome the world, you see its power to overcome sin. Think about the problem of sin for a moment. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. When I sin, when I'm of a cannibal age and I sin, I suffer spiritual separation from God. The soul who sins, he'll surely die. It separates God and man. 
God is separated from us by our iniquity and by our transgression. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. But now enter the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 23. While it is true, the wages of sin is death. Aren't you thankful for the latter part of that verse? The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The power to overcome that sin uh, Acts twenty two sixteen. Saul of Tarsus was told, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Peter preached, <laughs> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 2, verse 38. And for the Christian, you have the power through Jesus because of what he did to overcome sin. But there's a third area that I want you to think about the power of Christianity. Christianity has the power to overcome Satan. That one who is going to and fro, back and forth, looking for souls to destroy in Job chapter 1. That one who desired to sift Peter as wheat from the shaft or shaft from the wheat. That one who is a murderer and liar from the beginning. Listen to these words. Hebrews 2.14 Jesus, he through death, overcame who had the power of death and released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Jesus has crushed Satan under our feet. Romans 16, 20. He has defeated the devil and made a way of salvation and only Christianity has the power to overcome Satan. But here's a big one. Christianity is powerful because it has the power to overcome death. You know, Ponce, there's the old story that you read about in your history books. Ponce de Leon went around looking for the fountain of youth, that, that pool that if you could drink out of it would allow you to live forever and remain youthful all your life. Well, friend, the, the fountain of youth, the power to overcome death, is not found in some pool. John 11, 24 and 25, Jesus tells us where it is. I am, Jesus says, the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he'll never really die. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Revelation 14, verse 13. The Bible clearly teaches death has been victoriously defeated through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Now let me offer you a fourth reason why I'm a Christian. And friend, you've got to think soberly and you've got to think beyond this old world. I'm a Christian because of eternity. Eternity is a real idea. Ecclesiastes 3.11, the writer says, God has put eternity in our hearts. We may not fully grasp every idea, but we understand this is temporary, and we can understand there's something that's going to last forever. The Bible teaches that because of Jesus, we can have eternity with God forever. What is eternal life? John 17.3, Jesus said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the true and living God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent. This is the promise. He's promised us eternal life. 1 John 2, verse 25. And so I'm a Christian because of eternity, because there is a land we're going to, a place we're going to, a spiritual place where there'll never be an end, where time won't matter, where the clockmakers won't exist, a place forever where God is, who is eternal. And in that place, there are two options. Eternity is real, and I want to go to heaven. The Bible teaches in John 14, 1, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. When our earthly house is destroyed, we have a building made without hands from God, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1 and 2. And as Paul said, I consider the sufferings of this present world, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Jesus said, the righteous will go away into eternal life. But then there's a flip side to that. I'm a Christian because of eternity, and I want to go to heaven, and I don't want to go to hell. Nobody spoke more about hell than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Mark 9, 44, Jesus said, Hell is a place where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Friend, please understand, 
Hell is a real place. Just like when Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, the righteous go away into eternal life, Jesus also said the unrighteous will go away into eternal death. Place of torment, weeping and gnashing of teeth, a place where God doesn't exist and the environment is not one that you would want to live in. So am I a Christian? I'm a Christian because I fell in love with the Bible. I fell in love with the author of it, God himself. God gave us this beautiful book, the Bible, so that we could know him and know his will without a revelation from God. We can know, we can know there is a God. We can know a little bit about his nature and, and who he is. But without the Bible, there's no way really to know God. I can know God exists, but I can't know who he is. I can't know what he's like, and I surely can't know what to do to please him. God gave us the Bible so that we could know that. It is the inspired word of Almighty God. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. The word of God is pure and perfect. Psalm 19, verses 6 through 8. The Word of God is what gives us spiritual sustenance. Matthew 4, verse 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the Bible, my friend, contains the message of salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. One of the things I love about the Bible is the ending of it. The ending's a beautiful picture. God one day comes back to claim his own. There is a separation of right and wrong. Jesus glorifies and vindicates those who have lived right. And God takes his people to that beautiful place called heaven where we live with him for eternity and all the problems and challenges and difficulties of this world just don't exist there anymore. And friend, I'm a Christian because of the immense joy it brings to my life. There's a lot of sadness and there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of depression and there's just honestly a lot of very unhappy people in this world. Our happiness and our hope and joy and peace is found in being a Christian. Paul would say, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If you're looking for joy in temporary, shallow, mundane, lust-filled, passion-driven things of this world, friend, there's a news alert you need to hear. That's not going to satisfy. Put your happiness in God, not just in the here and now, but in God and there's a joy that transcends this old world. The Bible says in Acts 16, 25 of Paul and Silas that they were praying and singing hymns to God in prison and the prisoners were listening to them. The psalmist said, Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the seat of the scornful or sits in the path of the wicked, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. The joy Christianity brings to our life is beyond measure. But then let's highlight the last reason, probably one of the most meaningful. I'm a Christian because of Christ. I'm a Christian because of his life. Perfect, selfless, thought, thought he didn't think about himself, went about doing good. He went about doing good, healing the sick. He's done all things well, lived a perfect life. Hebrews 4, 15, the most benevolent, fed the sick, helped the poor, did good those who were in need, taught us to pray for our enemies, to treat people with kindness, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. His life is such a perfect picture of what life ought to be without focus on self and sin, his teaching. They said of Jesus, no man ever spoke like this man. That was his enemies who came to take him in John 12. And they said, no man ever spoke like this man to teach. And so when you think about some of the, 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 the teaching of Jesus that, that, that stands out as so amazing, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, uh, the teaching of Jesus to deny self, to be a servant. When Jesus said, if you want to be first, 
Be last. You want to be last? This is his teaching. Go the second mile. There's so many we could mention. His teaching is so amazing, amazing, encouraging. And then I'm a Christian because of his death. We talk about Christ. Look at the death that he died. Selfless, sacrificial. He knew it was coming the whole time. Willingly went to Jerusalem anyway. He allowed evil man, men to bind his hands. He, he was mocked. He was laughed at. He was spit upon. He was beaten. Stripes brought over his back again and again. He was innocent in all of that. Crown of thorns placed on his head, beat on the head with a rod, hands and feet nailed to a cross, that cross placed on the hill of Golgotha. He hung there in agony, putting pressure on his hands and feet every time he inhaled and exhaled. And ultimately, he cried out, it is finished. Why did he, why did he do that? Because that's how much God wants you and me to be saved. And then I'm a Christian because of Christ's promises. He promises me and you eternal life. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You'll find rest for your souls. Friend, that promise can be yours. We ask you today, why are you a Christian? Why have you obeyed the gospel? If you've never obeyed the gospel, we hope the things we've mentioned as reasons to be a Christian will motivate you to become one. If you are a Christian and maybe you haven't lived faithful to that promise, wouldn't it be a good time to make that right? Wouldn't it be a good time to make a better resolve to live faithful to the Lord? Again, we're so thankful you joined us for our study. I'm thankful to God to be a Christian. I hope you are. And I hope the things we've said today will motivate each and every one of us to live faithful to the Lord every day so that one day we can hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Won't you join us next time as we study more together? Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.